I don't know where to start. I was, I was gonna talk about having had a migraine yesterday. I guess I'm still talking about that. And then I found this other shit about a gentleman by the name of Edward Bernays. B-E-R-N-A-Y-S. I, I, I encourage anyone to um, research him. He's the father of public relations and described himself, described public relations as psychological warfare. That's a direct quote. That's his own description. <coughs> I'm gonna get back to that. Um, it's it's challenging not to feel outrage, and I'm I'm recognizing I'm not suppressing it. I'm just recognizing that that is there in learning about this man and um, learning the things that I have been reading. But also, it's painting a clearer picture of how all of this and the extreme situation that we, we find ourselves in uh, being mass industrialization, the commoditization of basic necessities of survival, physical survival, and self-expression. Basically, the, the commoditization of existence. That, that it's all been necessary to point to how vulnerable and readily exploitable ego is. And that is benefiting us. That is serving us because it's, it's finally shining a light on ego and creating this awareness, which is what is allowing mass awakening to take place. And as the mass awakening occurs, we become more aware and less swayed by the insane programming, and it is insane, it is absolute insanity, of the ego. We become less driven by it. We had to reach this point of nearly extincting ourselves. Of many of us wanting not to be here to see the profound dysfunction that we have been operating from and which has been exploited. And again, that exploitation was necessary to reveal this dysfunctioning which is present in all of us. And now that it has been revealed and is increasingly revealed, <coughs> we get to choose a different way now we have a choice up until now we have not up until now we haven't had a choice this is the choice point do we continue under the operation of disordered, diseased egoic mind Or do we choose to be real? Do we choose to tap into something beyond that, to recognize that we are something beyond that? That we are not just this mind, and we are not confined to its limitations. Do we realize that we can choose something other than to be manipulated and to manipulate? 
we can choose something other than that. We can choose a security that is tapped into and not informed by the external world. It's informed from within, from a deeper place, removed from the experiences of this realm. Do we choose to find faith, trust in the universe, in nature, in the natural order, not the man-made one, which is and has always been a manipulation Do we choose to stop manipulating ourselves and each other and instead just be fucking authentically delighted in our own expression for the sake of it? Do we choose to express simply to express and not because of some result we are trying to achieve? not because we're trying to persuade anyone. Oh, fuck. I gotta pause this. <laughs> okay, that took a lot longer than I expected. I was on the phone with my parents, and I have no memory of what I was really talking about before that. So I'm just going to read this bit about Edward Bernays that kind of stuck out the most to me. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing that doesn't stand out. He was basically the first person to really sell propaganda. He, he figured out how to spin propaganda as a positive thing. <laughs> <coughs> and yes, he has massively influenced American culture. Not just that, um, the, the spread of consumerism. the way that America is run as a business and a part of that being run as a business includes a PR department that disseminates our accomplishments around the world, that spins the story of America as the greatest, the greatest country on earth. He's, he was a part of the origin of that. Nephew of Sigmund Freud, where is this quote? Yeah. Uh, keeping up a worldwide propaganda to disseminate American accomplishments and ideals. That was a significant focus. Um, and there's a lot of notable stuff, but most notably for me, what just reading this, this is all Wikipedia, so of course... I, you know, I would have to do other research, but there's no reason that I see that this this would be fabricated. Um, doesn't mean it's not, but it is heavily annotated. Uh, <laughs> he worked with the American Tobacco Company. Doesn't say exactly when. The late 1920s, early 1930s and was given the objective of increasing Lucky Strike cigarette sales among women who had not really taken to smoking. Shocking. The first strategy, the first strategy was to persuade women to smoke cigarettes instead of eating. Bernays began by promoting the ideal of thinness itself. using photographers, artists, newspapers, and magazines to promote the special beauty of thin women. He then found medical authorities to promote the choice of cigarettes over sweets 
and homemakers were cautioned that keeping cigarettes on hand was a social necessity. The man is directly responsible. Directly responsible. Maybe not single-handedly, but directly. For the unrealistic beauty standards that we have today in Western civilization. Which have led to body dysmorphic disorder of every variety, eating disorder, the internalization of unworthiness uh, in women, and of course all of this was, was ripe for the fertilizing, I, I don't want to say picking, because ego is primed for this, right? And this was something that he recognized. This is something that Freud recognized. Ego. If you can find a way to make it feel diminished, then you can sell it away to make it feel increased. And that is the core of the American consumer system. If you can find a way to tap into ego's innate fear of inadequacy, then you can very effectively sell it something to make it feel more adequate. And that's all this fucking shit is. It goes even further. It goes even further. So the first strategy, the first promotion, <coughs> was to associate cigarette smoking with beauty. But that's not going to appeal to all women, right? There are some strong women out there who don't care about being recognized as beautiful. But uh, those strong women are probably a part of women's rights movements. Yeah, they noticed that. So the next step was to associate smoking with women's rights. And they created a march. <laughs> they set up a march and invited members of the women's party, specifically, uh, good looking, but not too modely. That's the quote. Three for each church covered should be sufficient. Of course, they're not to smoke simply as they come down the church steps. They are to join in the Easter parade puffing away. This is a direct quote from Bernays. So they recruited women who were standing for feminism and used them to promote smoking as a fundamental representation of women's rights. Well, simultaneously using it to diminish women <laughs> and make them feel bad about themselves. <laughs> it doesn't stop there. I mean, it goes, it goes on. The guy ran a whole <laughs> secret campaign to get people into the color green because the packaging for the cigarettes was green and red and um, it clashed there was some upset over it being unfashionable the colors green and red were unfashionable and they're still working to get female smokers right so he orchestrated a whole charity ball secretly as an anonymous facilitator and they invited famous socialites uh, and asked them to wear green and they, they informed manufacturers and, and retailers of clothing that there was an excitement around the color green. They just told them green is all the rage. They just, they just told them that. 
and then set up this ball and had women come dressed in green. They invited intellectuals to give talks on the theme of green. And people bought it, hook, line, and sinker. And then green became the color. Uh, he did lots of crazy shit. Lots of crazy fucking shit. He was instrumental in the Banana Republic incident with Chiquita Bananas, United Fruit Company. The whole... For it started, it started as a way to sell bananas. <laughs> um, <coughs> it, it, it's it's just mind-boggling it started as a way to sell bananas and then it turned into a way to induce this is a quote to use media pressure to induce the president and state department to issue a policy pronouncement comparable to the Monroe Doctrine concerning expropriation. And they got, they, they riled up all of this concern over the threat of communism in Guatemala. It directly led to the CIA's coup in Guatemala. And it started as a way to fucking sell bananas. He was behind all of it. He touted the idea that the masses are driven by factors outside their conscious understanding and that therefore their minds can and should be manipulated by the capable few. Quote, intelligent men must realize that propaganda is the modern instrument by which they can fight for productive ends and help to bring order out of chaos. Propaganda was portrayed as the only alternative to chaos. He wrote books about this. Books that were read famously by Joseph Goebbels, I don't know how to say his fucking name, but German Nazi politician. Read and used by the Nazi party. I, I don't know what else to say. Is it any surprise? <laughs> Is it any surprise that we've advanced to where we are to this election where one of the candidates is endorsed by the Ku Klux Klan officially? And yes, the other one apparently endorsed by Putin. I mean, I'm not gonna get into any of it, but and I have my stance. It's private. <laughs> I'm certainly ready for the fall of capitalism. We'll put it that way. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with that. But we are a country built on propaganda and we have disseminated that mindset effectively because we've propagandized it. We have propagandized the use of propaganda and effectively sold it to the majority of the world. A society that is ego-driven is easily controlled. A society that is reminded to be afraid 
is reminded of its inadequacy, is fed the fuel of self-loathing, has that perpetuated, is easy to sell to, easy to profit off of, and easy to keep under control. Because we're either numb or we want to be numb because we feel so much pain. Because we're reminded regularly how unworthy we are of simply existing. It's time for this to stop. It had to reach this point. It had to reach this point so we could realize just how fucked all of it is and we could realize exactly what our role in it is. So we could take back our power. This is the path of every abusive relationship. We have been in an abusive relationship with ourselves, with the government, And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I am so grateful. The same way that I was grateful for the toxicity that I experienced for 10 years. And I claim my role in that. I was party to the toxicity. I participated in it. I'm not some victim. It wasn't just, woe is me, this person is terrible and I am the long suffering victim. No, I invited it, I participated. I was equally unconscious. But all of that drove me to discovering consciousness. It drove me to recognizing how I was allowing this to take place. We are recognizing collectively how we have allowed the narcissistic patriarchal energies to manipulate us. Now that we see the game, and we see that we have been playing the game because it requires our willing participation. We were just participating unconsciously. Now we can choose something else. Now the power is coming back into our hands. Now we get to set boundaries. Now we get to stand up and say, I am no longer afraid of something else. You, you had instilled this fear in me and I had accepted it. I had accepted that fear as my own, that I could not find anything better than this, that anything other than this would be my undoing, would be my demise. I accepted that. I believed that. I don't any longer. I don't know what the future holds, but I believe I believe that it is more than this. It's more than this and it's better than this. And more than that, I am no longer afraid of the unknown. I am willing to venture into the unknown to find out what else is out there. I am not afraid to walk alone. I am not afraid of something unfamiliar. I am not afraid of something unpredicted. I have been taught that the devil I knew was better than the devil I didn't. But accepting this, I only ever knew the devil. Now I am realizing I have kept out the potential of knowing anything else. And I accept that I might yet know another devil, but I might know an angel too. And I would rather walk forward into that possibility than stay in this determined hell. We're opening our hearts to something different. We're opening our imagination to something different. We are feeling more than ever willing to trust because we're seeing that this isn't, this isn't it. It's not what we thought it was. It's not what we were told it was. And it is not the only choice and even if the other choice ends up as death, we would rather choose that consciously 
and willingly than shrink in fear into this continued bondage we would rather find out we would rather be open to possibility we are learning to hope again we're learning to dream again and that is creating the future that we're moving into this is the end of the industrialized civilization that we've known it to be there's some time yet for it to, to dissolve but it's happening most assuredly it's happening because we are waking up and we cannot go back to sleep we will not not this time not this time it's too much it's too big i know it's happened before we woke up a little bit and we weren't ready yet we closed our eyes again and that's okay this time we're ready this time even if we close our eyes we can't fall asleep we're too unsettled the sun is right there beaming in it's burning through our eyelids and we can't keep it out we will open our eyes and say it's time to get up now and it's time to walk towards something different i don't know what that is but i know i'm moving towards it i know not this thank you contrast for giving me the clarity of knowing what i don't want i know now more clearly what i do maybe not with detail but i know it's not this show me what that means i know it's not this show me what it is that is the opposite of this that's what i'm asking for that's what i'm moving towards that's what we're doing that's what we're building right now that is the future that lies in wait for us it is absolutely certain and i am so fucking excited to be a part of this movement thank you for being here it is not by accident it is not a coincidence you chose to be here now this is the most exciting time in all of human history the most exciting time in the evolution of consciousness there's never been a time like this we are on the brink and the future is blindingly bright that's all I got I love you be you that's it that's all you ever have to do just be you nobody else you take it easy <laughs>